today you're going to learn how to make any video look like it was shot on a film camera. We'll be using DaVinci Resolve stock film emulation LUTs, which is included in the free version and the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. I'll be showing you how to apply these LUTs to many different types of video, and also a specific conversion process that you'll need to do in order for these film emulation LUTs to work. So with that said, let's get started. By the way, as a bonus, I'm going to show you guys some of my own personal favorite tips and tricks on how to make this film emulation look more authentic by using DaVinci Resolve's open effects. Okay, here I have a clip of when I was in Hawaii. This was shot on a Sony A7S III in S-Log3. So the first thing you want to do is add a couple nodes. This first one I always like to have as noise reduction, so I'll just put NR. This next one, this next one's just going to be primary corrections. And then what you'll want to do actually is add another node. Come up here to the open effects and scroll down until you see color space transform. Let's go ahead and throw that color space transform on top of that third node. Then what you'll want to do is add another node and then go ahead and push alt or option on your keyboard and press L to create a layer mixer node. So here with the CST, what we want to do is convert this log image to a rec 709. So let's go ahead and select input color space. And I know I shot this in S gamut three, and then the input gamma is going to be S log three. That adds a little bit of saturation and contrast, but I think the image still needs some work. So on the node before the CST, this is where I'm going to do a lot of my corrections. So what I'll first do is add some contrast. And then obviously my shadows, my dark points are getting crushed right now. So I may actually just pull the pivot up to kind of recover some of that information. Also, what I like to do is select my white balance and that's where I'll just go ahead and select this part of the waterfall. Also, what you can do is add a little bit of saturation. And now we have a really good looking image. So then what we want to do is come over here to where we created these layer mixer nodes. And let's go ahead and right click on this top one and add a film LUT. Let's go ahead and select the 2383D60. And then I'm going to copy and paste that LUT, or you can just come in here and add that same exact LUT to the node above it. Now, obviously this looks terrible, but the one conversion process you'll have to create here is by clicking on the CST coming here to the output gamma and selecting the Cineon film log. Now, the reason you do that is because now this is outputting a log image. And if you turn off these nodes, it basically takes our corrected Rec 709 image that we did with our CST, converts it to log. So now if you want to have a little bit of flexibility of controlling the gamma curve of the LUT, what you'll want to do is come to this layer mixer node right here, right click on it, select the composite mode, and then select color. Then what you can do is select this node here, come down here to the key output, and you can turn this down and you'll still retain a lot of the color information while controlling the gamma curve of the footage. Real quick, I just wanna give a shout out to Jim Robinson and Colin Kelly for this method. Thank you guys. Okay, so this is the first method of how to do this. This is the second way, and this has got a little bit of a variation on how you can control the LUT. So let's go ahead, add some nodes. I'm going to add a CST to this second node here. Now this was shot on a Panasonic GH5, so I'm gonna make sure that I select the proper input color space and gamma. I'm going to warm up the image a little bit on this first node. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast as well, and then also just recover the blacks and the highlights just a little bit by using the curve here. So now instead of coming up here to the output gamma on the CST, what we can do is actually add another color space transform on this node after the CST, then select the output gamma, scroll down and select Cineon Film Log. Then what you'll do is create another node, right click on that, and let's go ahead and add one of the film looks. I'm going to select the 2383 once again. Now this is where a lot of you may come down here and just select the output gain on this node. But now you're just kind of going between the log image and the LUT, which you're basically just kind of taking out the color information. And I don't like the way you control it like this. So what you can do is highlight the CST that converts this image to log and the LUT. Go ahead, select both of those, right click and come down here and select compound node. Now what you can do is control the key output of that node which now you're controlling the look between the Rec. 709 balanced image that we created and the Cineon film log conversion and film LUT, if that makes any sense. So you're basically just kind of controlling back and forth between what your image was before and the applied LUT with the conversion. Now, as I mentioned this earlier in the tutorial, I was going to show you some of my personal tips and tricks on how to really take these film emulation LUTs to the next level. 
So in order to do so, what I'm going to do is add another serial node after this compound node. So what I'm going to do is select that node. I'm going to add just a little bit of sharpening. I'm going to pull this down to about 47. Then I'm going to create another serial node. I'm going to come up here to the open effects and I'm going to search for glow. Go ahead and drag glow onto this clip. And obviously you can see this is really blown out, but what's great is you could just turn down the shine threshold and then come down here to the composite type and select soft light. Now, if I toggle this on and off, you can see this really blooms out the highlights. It's really cool. You can play around with the shine threshold and the spread depending on what look you're trying to go for. I'm going to add another serial node here on the end and come up here to the open effects and select grain. Go ahead and select film grain and drag that on top of the last node that we just created. Now I'm going to select the 35 millimeter film grain. And if you look closely, I can't even really tell. So you won't be able to tell on YouTube. So in order to really get some strong grain effects, what you can basically do is just turn up the grain strength. Now, what I like to do is turn things up all the way and really see what it's doing to the image. So if I turn it down, you guys might be able to see that, turn it up all the way. And then I'm gonna turn it back down. That just adds some natural organic elements to the video itself. Now, if you wanna add parallel nodes or layer mixer nodes, I suggest doing them before the CST or right after the CST. Keep in mind, if you do work before the CST, you will be working in a log space. And if you do it after the CST, you will be doing it in a Rec. 709 color space. Very important though, what you'll wanna do is make sure you leave the sharpening, the glow and the grain on the last three nodes. So what happens when you film a video and it's already shot in a Rec. 709 profile, meaning it's not shot in log or raw. So what I like to do on these types of videos is create a few nodes. On this first node here, I do very, very basic corrections. With the Sony a7S III shot in a Rec. 709 profile, it's really nice because there's actually just a little bit of headroom where you can recover highlights, as you can see on the waveform in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So I'm just gonna do some basic corrections. I'll also select white balance, which will be in my hat or my shirt. My shirt was gray, so you can toggle between those two. Then on the second node here, I'm going to come up here to open effects. Let's go ahead and drag a color space transform on top of this. So all you'll have to do is just make the adjustment of coming to the output gamma, selecting the Cineon film log, and then adding a film LUT. I'm going to select the Kodak, and this gives like a really desaturated look. It looks really nice. And I'll go through one more look real quick. I'll just select the Fujifilm D60. So now that is the third way of applying a film LUT as well. If you guys want to try method one or two that I showed you earlier in this video, you can apply that to any type of footage. You just have to make sure you convert it to a log color space. Then you can make the choice of your own on how you want to control the LUT. And if you want to, you can add the glow effects and the grain on top of this. Personally for me, I shoot my Rec. 709 profiles with the sharpening at normal, everything, the contrast, the saturation is all at zero. It's just on the most basic default natural profiles. So I'm not going to be adding any sharpening or major color correction. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.